Hey, over here. Maybe I should change the the page. This is the big picture. Um, a lot of what we do for the next, um, I would say, rest of this semester has to do with this equation. Yeah, we're going to deal with photosynthesis and cellular respiration also, but you got to know that the only reason why DNA is important in living things is that it is eventually used to produce proteins. Uh, 6.3 talks about hi. 6.3 talks about uh, how the very first steps of how the message on DNA is made into um, proteins. Uh, we're going to skip a few important steps. We'll get to those in later chapters. But you need to know the structures that are involved here. And the two major structures are the nucleus and the ribosomes. So uh, we'll get back to this slide in a moment. But uh, take a look at these objectives. You've got to understand why the nuclear envelope is structured the, the way it is and what functions that those uh, pores have um, and how the uh, nucleus actually controls how much protein synthesis that takes place. Uh, there's a nucleolus in there. Keep your eye out for that. We'll come back to these objectives when we're done. And um, there's some ribosomes that will then actually do the translation portion of this. I know uh, in, in sophomore biology we've touched on all these things, but we really haven't gone into them in any depth whatsoever. So um, we first have to get through these structures that exist within every cell. Um, here you go. Uh, the genetic instructions are housed in the nucleus and carried out by the ribosomes. And you can see that here. You can see some uh, major players here. I see this guy called the nucleolus here in the middle. Here's the nuclear envelope with some pores. Well, here's something called chromatin. We'll get into that. Here's some chromosomes where some, um, some genetic information is stored. So at first, you'll see this figure in your book. Um, and uh, this figure talks about the structure and the function of both the nucleus and the ribosome. I, I encourage you to spend some time looking at both the structure and the function here. You'll see that um, they're, they're interchangeable. Really, there's no function without structure and vice versa. Uh, the nucleus contains most of the cell's genes. Additionally, the nuclear membrane is just like, a, just like the membrane that's, that's on the surface of any cell. Um, oh dear. Uh, we're not going to end show right now. Um, uh, it's a phospholipid bilayer. and um, it allows things to come in and come out, and there's proteins that, that enable that to happen. Um, it also separates this important information that I look at, as I use the metaphor of a, of a book. Uh, DNA is a book that opens and closes, and you want to protect that book in a nice casing or, or on a shelf in a library. And so the, the phospholipid bilayer serves that purpose. Pores are the, these protein channels that allow uh, entry and exit of certain things. Now, this is very specific. Don't think that just anything can come into and out of the, um, the nucleus. And you can see here, it, it's important to understand that these pores are right next to this other organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. These are where ribosomes that are bound ribosomes um, bind to this organelle and do this translation portion of protein synthesis. You'll see a whole bunch of uh, uh, traffic on this page, blah, 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 pore complex, nuclear lamina, all this stuff. They're all important. The lamina just helps keep the structure of this bag of fat, this fat bag, basically, this nucleus. Um, you can see the inner membrane, the outer membrane, and all this stuff. So these are, these are electron micrograph um, uh, pictures that were taken with a microscope of the nucleus, um, the outside of the nucleus. Well, inside the nucleus, the DNA and proteins, it's very important to understand, uh, they come together. It's not just uh, genetic information like A's, T's, C's, and G's, but there's proteins in there also which have actually come through those pores from the cytoplasm into the nucleus to combine with th those nucleotides, the A's, T's, C's, and G's, to make something we call chromatin. Um, most of the time, DNA is just loose with, within the nucleus. It's um, wide open, it's, it's, it's diffuse, it's spread out, lots of transcription is going on. But right before cell division, and we'll call that mitosis, um, the, they, they call it, the verb that, that the book always uses is condensed. The, 
the um, genes condense to form chromosomes. This chromatin condenses. These proteins and these these nucleotides condense down, and we can and you can see that here on the picture. You can you can see these actual chromosomes, but it doesn't look like this most of the time. And in fact, in this picture, you'll see the chromatin is really diffuse. This is probably in a time when mitosis is not going to be occurring. Uh, just the normal cell. Um, activities are, to, are taking place. Uh, you'll, you'll see another player here called the nucleolus. That's where a lot of RNA exists, and we'll get into RNA later. But the specific type of RNA which is made by transcription from DNA, uh, from the message on DNA, uh, it combines with some, all, some additional proteins to create these small and large subunits of we something we call ribosomes, which then the ribosomes leave the nucleus go out to the endoplasmic reticulum and do transcription or translation. I know that's a lot to digest, so make sure that you rewind this if you need to. Uh, press pause if you need to. We'll move on. Um, there's two different uh, uh, types of ribosomes. They either are free ribosomes right here in the middle, and they exist. They just float out there in the cytosol uh, or the cytoplasm. And there's also another type of ribosome called a bound ribosome. You can see that here. It's bound to the endoplasmic reticulum. Both will translate a message from RNA. The bound ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum, they're the players in this big um, DNA to RNA to amino acid to protein. That's what we'll be looking at, these bound ribosomes. And what they do is they create uh, amino acid sequences, which will then fold and combine with other amino acids sequences which are called polypeptides into these big protein complexes and usually those those complexes then are packaged in some sort of vesicle and they'll go to the Golgi body or they'll leave the cell or they'll go to a lysosome or things like that but um, those are the two different types of ribosomes and what they do. Uh, here is a picture of a ribosome. You can see here, um, let's try the pen. You can see here the large subunit and the Yikes, the small subunit of the ribosome, they come together uh, uh, sometimes on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum to do this translation that we talked about. Just know there's two different subunits. And um, I, I've said down here that they're made of rRNA from the nucleus uh, and also some proteins. Press pause and uh, see if you can get the answer to this question. Of course, I won't tell you the answer now. We'll deal with it later. But um, that was 6.2. Good luck. Or sorry, 6.3. Good luck. Um, uh, please spend some time looking at these objectives, and um, we'll talk about them tomorrow in class. Thanks.